We want to take you now to Nashville, Tennessee, where NTSB officials are giving an update uh, that just concluded actually a short time ago about the small plane that crashed off an interstate last night, killing all five people on board. Let's watch. John C. Tune Airport's identifier is Juliet Whiskey November. For reasons unknown, the aircraft ascended and approached John C. Tune Airport and passed overhead at 2,500 feet. The pilot reported that he was going to pass over the airport at 2,500 feet. Very quickly thereafter, the pilot reported a catastrophic engine loss of power or a loss of engine power, a complete loss of engine power. No emergency was declared by the pilot. However, ATC, which was in communications with the pilot, declared an emergency on the pilot's behalf and offered assistance and a landing back at John C. June Airport. The airplane passed overhead, made a U-turn, and impacted the road, the shoulder behind me, between mile marker 201 and 202 on I-40 East. The aircraft tumbled, came to rest on the hill behind me, and burst into flames and all five persons on board were fatally injured. So what we're going to do is, is this. My, my on-scene portion of the investigation is actually a fairly small part. Uh, the wreckage has just been transported to a facility up in Springfield, Tennessee, where we can uh, do an investigation under very controlled circumstances, because as you can see, the weather, it's actually lightened up a little bit, but it's been pouring rain all day. Uh, the accident site is very muddy. Uh, we packed the uh, aircraft up and it's being transported up to Springfield as we speak. Tomorrow morning around 0900, uh, myself and my party members are going to meet at the facility and do a wreckage examination where we're going to uh, basically put the airplane back together in a three dimension uh, uh, format on the floor of the hangar, which will, can help us determine what actually caused the failure of this engine. Right now, the most important thing to do is uh, uh, preserve the perishable, the non-perishable evidence, you know, and the perishable evidence, including witness statements, doorbell cameras, Costco right here. They they have a video that we were able to acquire that showed the actual impact. Uh, but my call to the public is this: if you go to witness at ntsb.gov, that's witness at ntsb.gov, and provide any kind of information that would assist us in the investigation, cameras. Air, uh, cameras on your car, Tesla cameras. If you saw it, if you heard it, please go to witness at ntsb.gov and let us know because that's a critical component of the investigation. We're going to be looking at the human, the machine, and the environment. The human being, the pilot, his or her qualifications. We don't know who was flying yet, um, how many flight hours they had, how much experience they had in this particular airplane. Okay? The environment, of course, is the weather. Uh, right now, the initial reports are that the weather last night was beautiful, 10 miles clear. It was a, it was a beautiful night. Uh, the sun had just gone down. It was still dusk when the accident happened, but it was getting pretty dark at the time. Uh, and uh, air traffic control communications, we're going to really look at that. It, the the on-scene part is a much, it's a smaller part of a much larger holistic process. A lot more information is going to be gathered and examined behind the scenes and when I get back to NTSB headquarters. Uh, in about 10 days, I will have a preliminary report accomplished that'll give us the basic factual information that we've learned on scene and during the examination. In 9 to 12 months, a factual report will be generated, and shortly thereafter, a probable cause as determined by the NTSB board members. With that being said, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Right now, preliminary reports are, he wants to know uh, where was the airplane heading. All indications are it was heading towards John C. Toon Airport, which is the airport right behind us here. Uh, we do know that the flight originated in, in um, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I don't have the specifics on where it took off from. Uh, it then subsequently made several stops, uh, one in Erie, Pennsylvania, and then, of course, in uh, Mount Sterling. Uh, more than likely to, to pick up gas, but that's uh, undetermined at this point. I'm sorry, can you speak up? That's unknown at this time. The uh, I have my cohorts back at the NTSB, along with the local medical examiner and the police, are working to identify the uh, uh, the people on board. Uh, we do know they are Canadian citizens. We are working with the Canadian government, the consulate, uh, the embassy, to try to positively identify who they were. Uh, all, all I can tell you right now is we have two adults and three minor children. Were they all together at the same time? Or were they 
Yes, they were all together at the same time, originated at the same location. Do you know if the plane has any history of problems? Or uh, we don't know if the airplane had any history of problems yet, but that's something that's going to be looked at later. I, I do have the maintenance records, which is very important. Uh, they're in my vehicle. Um, I'm going to examine them tonight. We'll take them to the facility tomorrow, go through the maintenance records, and see if they will yield any information. But yes, uh, we don't know that yet. We're too early in the stages of the investigation. Uh, uh, we do have personal facts that we are taking with us, and our transportation disaster assistance people, the same ones who are working with the uh, the embassy, uh, will be in charge of making sure that those personal facts get back to the family. Do you know the gender of those five involved? I don't know the gender of the five people involved yet, no. I, I, you know what, I, I, I'd like to say yes, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it was dark, um, and the angle that he came in, it, it would have been very, very difficult for him to land on the interstate because he came in perpendicular to the interstate, but that's something I don't think we'll ever know. You've been listening to an NTSB official give an update on that small plane that crashed in Nashville, Tennessee, killing all five on board. You heard that the pilot of the plane announced a complete loss of engine power, and after the plane made a U-turn, it crashed near an interstate. NTSB officials are still trying to figure out what caused the engine failure. Two adults and three children died in the crash. The investigation is ongoing, and a preliminary report will be ready in 10 days. It'll include a probable cause. We're going to take a